What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here. Today, I am bringing you my top tips and tricks for the eight string guitar. If you are considering picking up the eight string guitar, you need to know it is a wily beast. You might think that all you're doing is adding two extra strings, but really what you're adding is a whole host of complications to your rig, to your playing style, to your tones, to your budget. It gets kind of crazy, and today I'm gonna try and save you a ton of trouble. Here I have the Court KX508MS. It's a multi-scale eight-string guitar. The first thing that we are going to talk about is scaling. It's probably the most important thing that comes into play right off the bat when you move up to eight strings. If you have never played a guitar with more than six strings or tuned lower than E flat, you may have never, ever even considered guitar scale length. All scale length is, is the length of the string, the distance between where it leaves the nut and enters the bridge, the saddle specifically. So why is that so important? Well, it's important because of something called string tension. String tension is just how tight the string is when it's tuned up to the pitch that you want it at. If you've ever tried to take a guitar and tune it way down without upping the string gauge, then you have experienced string tension problems. What happens then is that the pitch goes wild when you hit a note, it won't hold the tuning that you're trying to reach, and it feels really awful to play, the string gets real floppy, um, and it just feels like mush. Or you could wind up with the opposite problem if you have too much string tension. Then what happens is that the string is too hard to bend, it's too stiff, it sounds really harsh and kind of overly twangy. Uh, that can also be a problem. If you've ever looked inside under the lid of a grand piano, then you have seen this principle at work. The high notes are little tiny short strings, and the low notes are great big long ones. And the bigger the grand piano, the longer they are. And that's because string tension is very important when it comes to pitch. So in order to have good string tension, it's best to have short, thin strings for the high notes and long, thick strings for the low notes. So you can see how this could become a problem on the eight string guitar very quickly. Because of the huge range of notes all the way across the fretboard, we have to be very careful with the string tension. If the scale length is really long, that's really ideal for these lower strings, especially this low F sharp string where it gets really floppy really fast. But if we have that, then the high strings are gonna be kind of hard to play, really stiff. Some common scale lengths for eight string guitars are like 27 inches, 28 inches, and then basically all the way up to 30. 30 is a lot. It's, it's a very, very long scale length for a guitar. The high strings on a 30 inch scale guitar, I have played one before, and they are very, very, very stiff. And then of course, the string tension on the low string is amazing, and it sounds great, feels great. Playing a solo on that is a mission. It's a chore, it feels terrible. I've also played a 26.5 inch scale eight string guitar, and that was a different kind of nightmare where everything was just too floppy on the low end, the high end felt great. There is of course a third option, sort of a compromise between a long scale length and a short scale length, and that's a multi-scale guitar. On the low string, we have a 28 inch scale, which gives us super ideal string tension on this low F sharp, and then a 26 and a half inch scale on the high E string, which is way, way better than having all the way across 28 inches because that's an inch and a half less of crazy high string tension that this high E would have to have. This creates as ideal of a playing situation on an eight string guitar as I have personally experienced, and I highly recommend that you check out and look into multi-scale eight string guitars first. That leads us very nicely into our next topic, which is string gauge. String gauge and scale length are married together forever because scale length is going to partially determine how thick of guitar strings you're going to need. Because like I said, the longer the scale length, the better your string tension is gonna be for your low strings and the stiffer it'll be on your high strings. So you're gonna really have to take that into consideration when you're buying strings. There are not a ton of great eight string guitar string sets available from the major manufacturers. I did however discover that there's an awesome one from Ernie Ball, which is an 80 to nine set, which is great for standard tuning. That'll give you awesome string tension on most scale lengths. So like I said, on this guitar, the Court KX508MS, we've got a 28 and 26 and a half. So on the top end, a nine gauge string in standard tuning is gonna work great because that's the lightest that I would personally wanna go. Anything lighter than that, and it starts to get so thin that you 
almost can't bend it without it breaking pretty much immediately. And because 26 and a half is longer than a standard scale length, we're already at a higher tension no matter what. So nine and up, I would say, is, is the minimum. Um, tens would probably be fine. That's gonna be still a, a little bit tighter. Um, once you get to start getting into 11s and 12s, I hope that you're tuning your guitar down a bit to compensate. Then for the low string, a lot of eight string guitars come equipped with way lighter string gauges uh, than I would recommend. So if you're buying a brand new guitar and it comes from the manufacturer and the low string is really floppy, it's probably just because they sent you something that is, that is not high enough string tension. They haven't really quite caught up yet. So I highly recommend at least, at least something like a 76 if you're in standard F sharp tuning, preferably an 80 or maybe an 84 if you can get a hold of it. If you're getting a custom set, of course, you can, you know, it'll be uh, whatever you want, but it's gonna take a little bit of trial and error. So you're gonna have to be patient. You're gonna have to spend a little bit of money up front to find out what your ideal string gauge is because even if you follow my advice and you get something that's at least a, about an 80 for your low F sharp, you might find that the rest of them aren't exactly what you want and it's no matter what, it's gonna be personal preference, which means that it has to be a certain amount of trial and error. That brings us right to our next topic, which is tuners and tuning. The major problem that I have run into with eight string guitars and tuners is that many of them are not large enough to accommodate a thick enough string. This is something that you should look into before buying an eight string guitar. Like I said, for your low string, you're gonna want at least an 80 gauge string. And if the tuner that comes on the guitar cannot accommodate it, you're gonna be really sad. You can, with many guitar tuners, drill them out. You can drill out the hole that the string goes into. With locking tuners, that can be a, a much hairier ordeal. And if you're just not handy, then I wouldn't even try it. I would take it to a professional. One thing that I've done before is to order just one extra tuner for the low string that I was sure would fit the kind of gauge string that I was looking for. Usually you will not have that same problem with any of the other tuners. Usually they'll accommodate basically any possible size string that you would normally use for the other six or seven strings. In general, I also recommend locking tuners if you can get them, if for no other reason that they're gonna make your life so much easier when you're changing strings. This guitar comes with some locking tuners and changing the strings was an absolute snap. It's definitely worth a little bit of extra money to make your life so much easier. As far as tuning your eight string guitar, more strings means more possibilities for different kinds of tunings. The standard tuning on an eight string guitar is generally F sharp, B, E, A, D, G, B, E. So that's standard tuning on a six string guitar here, right? Just regular old E, A, D, G, B, E. And then we've added a B string, a fourth down from there, and then a fourth down from the B is an F sharp. Probably the next most common tuning on the eight string guitar is drop E. That's where you take your low F sharp string and you drop it down a whole step to an E. That's a cool tuning because it gives us three E strings and six octaves of E's on the same guitar. Check this out. This gives us pretty easy access to octaves, which will just be two strings apart on the same fret. This also makes it easier for a bass player to follow along with your riffs because if you're in drop E and they're in E standard on a four string bass, then you both have a low E string to go to. The next most common tuning and one of the coolest and most useful ones is E A E A D G B E. And what that does is it allows you to play the same thing on either these two strings or these two strings and get the same notes but in a different octave, for example. All I had to do was go up two strings and play the exact same thing, and I got the same thing, but an octave higher. To achieve this tuning, all we have to do is tune 
the lowest string down a whole step to E, and then tune the seventh string down a whole step to A. Another tuning worth checking out is the Meshuggah tuning. Meshuggah, of course, the progenitors of eight string guitar in metal. Um, they tune down everything down a half step, so it's F standard. Another thing that's about to become crucially important is muting, both with your right and left hand, as well as muting behind the nut and potentially behind the bridge, depending on the guitar that you wind up with. Um, if you have like a tunomatic style bridge, kind of like a Gibson, like a Les Paul, um, where there's excess string coming off the back of the bridge, that's definitely gonna need to be muted, as well as having something behind the nut. Um, here I've got a Groove Gear fret wrap, but you can use foam or a sock. Um, not very fashionable either way, but something to keep this excess string noise from happening. Because if you play something, you're gonna get a little bit of that ringing into your tone, and there's nothing that you can do about it performance-wise, unless you have a, a spare sixth finger that you can keep here to mute this uh, stuff and keep it from ringing out, it's just gonna happen. It's just gonna be in there all the time. If you play music with a lot of stops, even if you have a good gate, sometimes it'll still be in there. And even if you have a good gate, that only stops it when you're not playing. It's still happening. It's still in your tone while you're playing. It's just not all that loud. If I turn off the gate in this tone that I'm using right now, You can hear that ringing across the empty space in the playing. You don't want that. And if nothing else, this reduces your need for a gate at least a little bit. When it comes to the performance aspect of muting, basically you need to be very, very hyper aware of the muting on your right hand, much more so than anything else. And you also have to be aware that if you're used to playing a six string guitar, if you're going from six to eight, you're probably used to wrapping your thumb over the top to mute the low E string sometimes for certain things. Uh, for example, like a D chord, just like a regular old cowboy D chord, I generally will wrap my thumb around and mute the low E string, but you can't really do that on an eight string guitar unless you have freaky deaky long fingers, which I do not. Performance wise, one thing you're gonna have to get used to with the muting is muting much more so and much more carefully with your right hand palm when you're playing high up notes. Another thing that I've noticed that's really important when it comes to right hand muting is chunky metal palm muting. On the sixth string, especially like an open thing, I can get away with palm muting basically right on top of where the string meets the saddle. And that gives us a nice tight, chunky thing with a good amount of low end, but not too much. Once we get down to the eighth string and try that same thing. It's not really tight anymore. It's, it's really loose and open and just has too much low end and we don't want that if what we're going for is a nice tight sound. So you have to start moving closer to the nut to get that same effect that we got on the sixth and seventh strings. And you have to be a little bit more gentle with how hard your palm muting because if you push too hard on it, the pitch will really go wild, um, it'll, it'll go sharp, and then you'll wind up changing the pitch of the note that you're trying to play just because you're palm muting it and you don't want that. I'll show you what it sounds like as I move my palm from right on top of the saddle to a little closer to the pickups. See if you move too far and push too hard. It goes up almost a half step. This will be less of a problem if you have really good string tension, but even if you do, it's definitely something that you're gonna have to consider and practice to master. Another thing you're definitely gonna have to be aware of is your left hand muting. There's a lot more real estate to cover on an eight string guitar neck. It's a lot wider, there's more strings. So I like to sort of tilt the neck of my guitar up a little bit so that I can really get underneath it and flatten out my finger quite a bit. Whereas if I was playing it like this, um, my finger is very curved. You're letting these strings ring out. If you either just through sympathetic vibration of playing the guitar, they'll just start sort of quietly ringing out and then get louder and louder. Or if you accidentally bump them while you're playing a riff, you don't want that. So. 
um, really get underneath it and uh, play with good ergonomics. The most obvious thing about the eight string guitar is that it adds more range to the guitar. But what isn't quite so obvious is where it adds that range. A lot of people just think about the added low range without losing any high range. But to me, the most important and coolest thing about it is that you add range across the neck. Anytime you have to shift positions when you're playing guitar, you're wasting time, uh, it's inefficient, and it's just annoying. So when you're adding lower strings, what you've got is the opportunity to move this way instead of this way. Here's a lick that I wrote for an eight string guitar song that I did a long time ago, and it'll demonstrate how I can use that range going this way. So that's a lick that I don't think I could have played on a six or seven string guitar, because in order to get all the notes in there at the speed that I wanted it to, I would have had to do a couple of position shifts, and it just, I couldn't have done it in time. Anytime we add a string lower on the guitar, if we're going down in fourths, which is typical, we basically add five notes to our low range. But the way that you can also think about it is that we're taking these four notes or five notes, including the open string, and we can move them up to the fifth fret, still access them um, just like we did before, but now in a more convenient place. And now with an eight string guitar, we've done that twice. That means we've added eight easily accessible notes to every single position of the guitar. That means that you can play scales in one position that have tons of notes in them. For example, if I play this three notes per string scale going across the fretboard starting on the eighth string, look how many freaking notes it has in it. This means you can do massive arpeggios across the fretboard. Next up, let's talk about guitar tone for the eight string guitar. Of course, no matter what, tone is super duper subjective. It's gonna be different based on the style of music that you play, your personal preferences, all kinds of stuff. And I can't really tell you what it should sound like, but I can tell you that in my personal experience, it's kind of counterintuitive. For lower notes, for notes this low, you'd think, oh, you need a lot of bass because they're low notes. But the fact is, they're going to have bass and there's nothing that you can do about it really. You can cut it out, but coming out of the guitar, it's gonna have a lot of low end already. What's gonna make it stick out in a mix is more high end. Generally, I find that my eight string guitar patches are a lot brighter than my six and seven string patches. If you have a really super bright tone when you're playing on a six string guitar, it can be kind of annoying. But for super low notes like this one, if you take all the treble out of it, it's just not gonna cut through the mix at all. So when you're dialing in your eight string guitar patches, really for any genre, I would consider if you're gonna be playing a lot of really low notes to turn up the treble or the brightness um, on whatever amp setting or pedal or whatever it is that you're using. It also helps to turn the bass down a pretty considerable bit, especially because if you palm mute on that eighth string and there's too much bass, uh, you're going to fart out your speakers and it's gonna sound bad. And because you just need it to be a bit tighter for that string to sound like anything other than mud. You might be going for mud. You might like a nice super sludgy tone. You might need more bass. That's gonna be up to you. But for me personally, I like it a lot less bassy and a lot brighter the lower I'm tuned. Last, but certainly not least, the eight string guitar is for so much more than just genting on the low string, okay? You can just get a really long scale six string and do the same thing and uh, save yourself a lot of trouble. You know, impress your grandma now and again. Play some blues or something. So I'm sure that you've seen a lot of eight string guitar players playing with a clean tone and doing a lot of the old tippy tapping with two hands, um, playing some pretty complex 
and interesting melodic things. And I think the reason for this is pretty simple. On the eight string guitar, unlike on guitars with less strings, what we have is the possibility to divide it up into like a very usable bass and melody sections. Basically, you could use these four bottom strings exclusively for playing bass lines or bass notes, and then these four exclusively for playing chords or melodies. That's pretty unique, and to me, that really just blows the doors off this idea by having the range across the fretboard. It kind of gives your hands the space that they need to do the two separate things that they're gonna do. 